here's what we got going down. I'm going to risk it all for the chance to build a very large smoker. Uh, it's myself and my wife out here. This might be the last time you hear from us. If it is, I love everyone. YouTube, you saw it first. Whoa now, slow your horses. Hey, before we cut this thing open, I think there's some important footage that we need to watch that helped me get to a place to actually cut this puppy. I am gonna give this a go. And what we're doing here is we're gonna, we're gonna measure out our door. So you'll see that we gave a first attempt at kind of sketching out our doors. And it's safe to say that they're a bit too big, uh, too large. And really what I want is I want the bottom of my doors to be set at center line of the tank. So when we drew this in, we kind of just eyeballed where the bottom of the doors are gonna go, which after a couple nights of thinking about it, I don't think that's the right way to go. So today we are going to remeasure our doors and here's what I'm going to do. Essentially, if we can find top dead center on the tank, then we should in theory be able to measure all the way around and then whatever that measurement is, if we divide it into four quadrants, then that'll at least tell us, in theory, where the bottom of our door should, where the bottom of our door should start. So let's just say this is top dead center. A quarter of the way down is half of the tank. So everything we do is going to be set off that center line. The grates are going to be perfectly half at the tank center line. The, the collector is going to be set perfectly half so everything's right in the middle behold a center head square nifty tool required get it from good old home depot lows what i'm doing here is i'm taking a torpedo level putting it vertically on my center head square that torpedo level is uh magnetic so it kind of sticks in there inside of some grooves real nice and flush and i am just very tenderly leveling off that bottom far bottom level if you can see and i'm marking it which would in theory give me perfect center on the tank drop dead center on the tank and i'll move it ever so slightly left and right to get perfect center and then mark it and i'll do the same deal on the other side right where the seam is so there's seams on either side of the tank and i uh i marked either side and I took this slap paint tape which I don't remember the name of and I uh, I'm just gonna pull it slap a line from end to end and then in theory this is gonna give me drop dead center all the way across the whammy all the way across the tank left to right and of course once the chalk line is slapped um, from there you'll be able to sketch in and frame out your doors. So I believe I came about two or three inches off of the seam line around the edges of the tank. I came into the tank three inches as you can see. And then from that chalk line up top, let's just call that measurement to midline on the bottom 20 inches. You come down 20 inches and now you have the bottom of your doors. From there you just decide how tall you want your doors. You draw a vertical line and you're good to go. Now, there's a couple important things to keep in mind. One is that you're gonna have a thermometer. Ideally, one is gonna be in the middle of your tank. So make sure that you leave enough room on the middle spacer where you're cutting your doors out for that thermometer. If it's a three inch thermometer, then you're gonna need to keep that space maybe six inches wide to fit your three inch thermometer with a little bit of buffer. Uh, it's myself and my wife out here this might be the last time you hear from us. If it is, I love everyone. YouTube, you saw it first, okay? Now with that said, if we survive, which we did survive on that 250 out there, we cut that in half, um, but I must say my father-in-law, Bob, he made the first slice, uh, and so this is a bit more worrisome because Bob's not here. Bob, you've abandoned me, I don't appreciate it. But we got grinders going down, we got Urkel glasses going down. I ran some water in the 500. It probably did close to nothing, but I feel a little bit better that we ran it. So uh, yeah, let's just hook some shit up and let's get cutting.
Um, I feel scared. I feel worried. Yeah, I feel equally smart due to my protection. We are going to do the impossible, and that is slice a propane tank safely. here, but I also have not made it anywhere close. I feel so stupid talking with these on, but I'm going to leave them anyways. <laughs> should see my wife's face right now. I have never seen my wife more afraid in her entire life other than our wedding day. So <laughs> come, bring it close for real this time. What I'm doing is I'm scribing a line and this is just from trial and error. You think this is just makes logical sense, but I didn't do this the first time. What I did the first time is I just start right here. Let's say like if it's a four and a half inch uh, grinding wheel, I just cut this section until it went all the way through. And then I did this section and this section. And what ended up happening is I'd start here. If this was a straight line, my line went like this. Diagonal, because I'm an idiot. So what I did this time around is I just went real light over the line as straight as humanly possible. And I'm just going to keep going until it gets deeper and deeper until this line's set. And then I'm going to penetrate up top. And I believe that's the part where people blow up. So as long as we have penetration up top and we're good, then uh, we're good. Let's penetrate. say this on YouTube, but I can hold a toothpick in my ass cheeks. I am so nervous. Lord have mercy. The closer I get, I'm just going to start screaming. So when you're like at home, if you're driving or whatever, just scream with me and let's just all, we're all just going to scream. Let's keep rolling. Wrapping this video up with a couple key points. As you can see, obviously, I'm just laying my cuts. Um, if I had to go back and do this thing again, I'd probably make my first cut towards the bottom rather than the top because the tank is leaking a lot of water over my power tools and it was getting my legs all wet if you don't completely drain the tank. Second key point is when you're cutting or you know framing out your doors with your cuts, don't cut your door all the way out. The intention with these doors is not to cut them all the way and remove them. The intention is to make about 98% of your cuts and then leave the corners tacked in. And when I say leave the corners tacked in, I just mean like 
barely, barely leave the corners because what you'll do is you'll leave the corners tacked in so the door still remains affixed to the tank. You'll tack in your hinges and then you'll finish your cutout. And when you finish your cutout, that door is going to pop out of place and it'll be perfect. You'll see down the way, but keep that in mind as you're cutting. If you recall earlier in the video, I was talking about that middle thermometer and how I blocked out a six inch space. Just that blue masking tape that you're looking at, this was my method for making sure that I didn't cut into it. I just put masking tape over it because once you make that cut, if you mess up in that middle section, you cannot go back. There it is. I mean, that what an experience. I got the chance to make the first cuts on my uh, my 500 gallon smoker, as you saw. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got, got a little chuckle out here and there. Stay tuned, man. I'm telling you, I'm rolling out a lot of videos. We're gonna drop a ton of content on uh, how we built this thing, and I hope you hang around. And as always, I hate to be that guy, but please, for God's sake, hit that subscribe button. I love everybody. Meet and greet, appreciate you. Let's do this thing again. Yeah.